I'm Dr. Harriet Vanceball, Associate Professor of Medicine at McMaster University, and I'm absolutely delighted to have with me Dr. Paul Armstrong, Professor of Medicine from the University of Alberta and Principal Investigator of the Victoria Trial that was presented as a late breaking clinical trial at the ACC in the last week and published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Welcome, Paul. Good to be with you, thank you. So the Victoria trial tested the efficacy of the soluble guanylate cyclase uh, stimulator verisiguat in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. I wonder if you could start off by talking briefly about the mechanism of action of this drug. So verisiguat is a, uh, as you point out, a soluble guanylate cyclase stimulator. And uh, the first uh, in uh, heart failure, to be tested. It, uh, it basically <clears throat> enhances the production of cyclic GMP, which we know is diminished in heart failure based on the oxidative stress and endothelial dysfunction that uh, uh, surrounds the heart failure uh, syndrome. We also recognize that it enhances nitric oxide pathway so that uh, for those two reasons, uh, we think that the enhancement of cardiovascular function and cardiovascular uh, tone is uh, uh, enhanced with Verisigua. Wonderful. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the trial population and your methodology? So we chose a high-risk population and indeed ended up with a very high-risk population. Uh, these were patients who not only had heart failure with an reduced ejection fraction, as some of the more recent contemporary trials have, but they also had a recent worsening event, uh, usually associated with hospitalization of the need for IV diuretics. And so at entry, <clears throat> we knew that uh, because of, and they had very elevated natriuretic peptides, we expected that uh, heart failure hospitalization and cardiovascular endpoint, which was the composite uh, primary endpoint, would occur. And the trial was endpoint driven. So we had a specific number of events that we needed before we concluded the trial. And we did that uh, uh, sooner than expected in actually 11, uh, in about 11 months. The trial was randomized, placebo controlled, double blind, and Verisegwat was started in a dose of two and a half milligrams and then titrated over just a few weeks to the target of 10 milligrams. We achieved that dose. And in fact, what, that dose was maintained at 12 months in close to 90% uh, of both the placebo and the uh, study drug population. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, drug was well tolerated, uh, really no perturbations with electrolytes or renal function that required any modification of dosing. So you included right. patients with an EF of 45% uh, or less, and right. those with uh, New York Heart Association class two to four symptoms. Right. Uh, and they were a high risk population, as you pointed out, why don't you tell us some of the exclusion criteria? Because it's important that we bear that in mind as clinicians when we- Sure, so ourselves. if they were on long acting nitrates, we excluded them or a phosphodiesterase inhibitor given the drug-drug interaction with the NO pathway. Uh, but we actually enroll patients uh, uh, with diminished renal function. In fact, we, uh, we went down to 15 ml uh, of mm -hmm. GMR uh, and uh, uh, of course, the usual uh, exclusion criteria uh, that, uh, you know, if there were impaired uh, length of life uh, because of uh, comorbidities or correctable cardiac uh, uh, conditions, we, we excluded them. Uh, and we ended up then with uh, uh, actually 40%, as you point out, with, uh, with functional class 3. And a natriuretic peptide, uh, the, uh, the natriuretic peptide levels for entry were uh, uh, higher in the atrial fib than in the sinus rhythm uh, group, but the 2800 was the median uh, 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 natriuretic peptide at, at entry. So a high risk population uh, was uh, what, we, what we sought and what we got. Right, higher risk than many of the contemporary trials in HEFREF. Right. Uh, why don't you share with us the results of your uh, primary outcome? So at, at about 12 months, the uh, control or placebo 
arm of uh, the uh, population had a combined uh, event rate of over 38%, extraordinary, about uh, double or triple of most uh, heart failure trials. And we saw a relative reduction uh, uh, that was modest, 0 0.90 was the hazard ratio, p-value 0.019. But when you look at the event rates, it actually translates into a 4.2 uh, reduction in the primary composite event rate per 100 years treated, which is efficient in terms of 24 patients required to prevent one endpoint. When we looked at the components of the primary endpoint, the heart failure hospitalization was significant. The cardiovascular death uh, did not reach significance. The actual number was 12.9 in the um, placebo group and uh, 11.9 in the uh, Verisigwat group, we had expected a mortality rate of 11%, and you can see we exceeded that by almost 2%. Um, all, cause or all, all heart failure hospitalizations were reduced, and our secondary composite of all-cause mortality and heart failure hospitalization was also reduced. So we were pleased with the endpoint, and uh, pleased that uh, uh, in terms of the drug tolerability uh, of the drug uh, that uh, we thought that uh, uh, this was a result that might help patients in the future. Can you speak about the uh, rates of hypotension and anemia in right. both uh, groups? So we, we saw a, a, about a three or 4% increase in anemia compared to placebo. Uh, the uh, anemia was evident at about 16 weeks and then stabilized, there was no evidence uh, that we could see of hemolysis or blood loss. And the mechanism remains uh, controversial and uncertain, to be quite honest. The, there's been dilution uh, suggested, other factors. It is in the label for Rhea Sigwad, its country cousin that was approved for uh, pulmonary hypertension. Right. And we're delving into that. We have a very rich data set uh, but uh, I don't know what the mechanism was. The hypotension and the syncope, which were our pre-specified safety endpoints, thank you for reminding me, uh, tended towards uh, being uh, more frequent in the uh, verisigwat than in the placebo group, but they were not significantly different, but certainly they were there and uh, uh, manageable. And we, our investigators were, uh, were told, of course, to maintain uh, their, uh, the evidence-based therapy on which these patients were uh, on. I should have said that 60% were on triple therapy and 90% on double evidence-based therapy, 14% on Secubitril Valsartan with a treatment effect that was uh, uh, not modified. Uh, and there is one uh, uh, subgroup that's a particular interest that we're pursuing that is uh, the New England Journal of Medicine didn't allow us to publish the interaction p-value on the brain natriuretic peptide, but in the upper quartile of natriuretic peptide, it was actually a highly significant interaction term p001 for those patients in the highest natriuretic peptide. Fascinating finding, one that we're pursuing and we hope to bring to light at future meetings and to uh, publication soon. Wonderful. And uh... A point about guideline-directed medical therapy in light of the timing of this trial relative to DAPA-HF is that uh, I anticipate virtually no patients were on DAPA-Gliflozin. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, uh, if the audience is interested in looking at this, we've done a cross-trial comparison in a circulation paper that was published simultaneously, which tries to put in context DAPA-HF and paradigm trial, both in terms of the baseline features and the number needed to treat and the uh, uh, background uh, therapy. But um, uh, what, what role SDLT2 inhibitor plays as a background therapy in this population and whether the uh, worsening heart failure, which uh, Dr. Stevens, who commented on the trial, talks about as a, as a new issue uh, in, uh, in heart failure, these patients who seem to uh, worsened despite excellent therapy. You know, these people had 32% uh, use of devices and ICDs. Uh, we think maybe one in four, one in five patients with chronic stable heart failure would fit into this category, but you're absolutely right. Uh, whether DAPA, HF, uh, uh, or other, uh, uh, you know, glyphosin therapies uh, will play a role here, we don't know. Right. And this brings me to my final question. We now have a five alive cocktail, so to speak. Right. 
how do you see this class of medications fitting in with uh, beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, ARNI, dapagliflozin, and ivabradine? Where do you see this coming in uh, in terms of sequence of introduction to a patient's regimen once it gets approved? So we can say with assurance that these patients were exceedingly well treated with guideline-based therapy. So I think setting the SDLT story aside for a moment, patients that uh, either cannot tolerate or uh, uh, worsen uh, with guideline-based therapy, I think this gives you uh, a new option that was not previously available and applies to a substantial fraction of patients. But this is not first-line therapy, for sure. This, this is, uh, this is the, art, the heavy arterial you bring out uh, when, when things are not going well. Uh, but of course, as you well know, they don't go well for a lot of proportion of patients with heart failure. If you look carefully at the DAPA study, and indeed you look at the thoughtful editorial uh, by, Fa, by Fung in that, in that paper, you'll see that uh, there was speculation that these patients were at low risk and would, would uh, uh, that therapy work in a high risk population. I think DAPA, I think we don't know that, that question, but we do know that Vericiglot works in that population. So I think it's in the eye of the beholder and we encourage people to look across trials and look at our work and others and make an informed decision. But I think uh, good that clinicians will have another arrow in their quiver. Right, and a large proportion of patients with HEF-REF have ischemic heart disease. What can you say about the safety and efficacy in this population? Similar efficacy, similar safety uh, in, in that population, which as you would guess, was probably about two thirds of the, uh, of the population. And we'll be, uh, we, we have a, a, a very talented executive committee and 42 national leaders that are all primed to begin to help us write uh, on the, uh, some of the subgroups that are pre-specified and some of the other data that we think will inform clinicians in terms of uh, the use of the therapy. And hopefully that'll be available by the time this drug is approved. Thank you so very much for joining me today. It was a pleasure to meet you and we're delighted on this successful trial that you led. Thank you, Dr. Armstrong. Thank you very much. Good to be with you. Likewise, bye now.